Have you unlocked your YouTube community tab? And if the answer to that question is yes, have you unlocked its full potential? Today, we're discussing just that. What are the best ways to use the community tab? Are you using it enough? And could it be, uh, broken? Welcome to Tube Talk, the show dedicated to helping you become a better video creator so you can get more views, subscribers, and build your audience. Brought to you by vidIQ. Download for free at vidIQ.com. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dan Carson, and welcome back to Tube Talk. I will be your temporary host for the time being, and I want to give a shout out to Liron Segev. He's been the longtime host of the show, dedicated years of service to it, but has taken the next step in his career. We wish him luck, and who knows, perhaps one day we'll get to catch up with him in a future episode. So shout out to him. Joining me today to discuss the YouTube community tab is Rob Wilson, the very face of vidIQ. Rob, how are you? Yeah, hello, Dan. Thank you for having me on, as I guess uh, I might be a temporary guest as well. And I want to echo your thoughts on this sterling job Liron has done for us on Tube Talk for the last couple of years. So I also salute you, uh, Liron, sir, as well. And I hope to see hear and see you on vidIQ in the future. So why are we talking about the community tab today? It's a feature that, for me anyway, has gone a little bit undervalued until recently. I've been reminded of it, not just from you, Rob. You've been kind of kicking my butt into gear, getting more posts on my own personal channel. But the Spiffing Brit, a gaming YouTuber who actually covers exploits in games a lot of times, decided to cover what he feels is a potential exploit on YouTube itself with the community tab. He's made a couple of videos on the subject now. And uh, it has creators like us pretty curious. We're doing a lot of tests of our own to see what's going on. So I guess, Rob, I got to ask, do you feel the community tab is broken? Because that's what's being alleged. I think broken is quite a strong and extreme word. Uh, Like you say, I think for many creators, the community tab is uh, an afterthought and an underused and undertapped potential tool for all creators. And the spiffing Brit does come out with somewhat anecdotal evidence, but I think there are these occasions from creators who've found a power source in the community tab and it's helping grow their channels. And I think we should all investigate it and see how we can leverage, I guess, the overall general benefits rather than trying to find a specific hack because, uh, as usual, YouTube will clamp down on any hacks that are potentially discovered in the algorithm or whatever you want to call it. Right. I No, I completely agree. I feel like broken is a very strong word. Before we get too into that, we should probably talk about what even is the community tab for anyone out there who is like me, who doesn't really pay a lot of, a lot of attention to it, or perhaps you haven't even unlocked it yet. It takes a thousand subscribers to unlock the community tab. And it's one of the very reasons that should be one of your goals, aside, of course, from monetization. Uh, so let's let's start there and we'll get back to the discussion of is it is it broken? Is there an exploit to be uh, toyed with here? Uh, so what's your best description of the community tab? I've always described the community tab as your social feed on YouTube in the same way that you have primarily a social feed on Twitter and Facebook. But for YouTube, it's kind of a secondary source of staying in touch with your audience. For example, if you post one video a week or two videos a week, the community tab allows you to stay in touch with your audience every single day for usually five to 10 minutes worth of effort and work, which means that it can be really powerful. I think what... Um, detracts creators initially is that they'll maybe post one or two things on that uh, community tab and they won't get that much engagement from it and then they just abandon it and as with anything uh, in the social world you have to cultivate it to a certain extent in order for it to start paying back and so community tab in the sense that you can post uh, a simple uh, message on it uh, through text you can post images on it and uh, quite powerfully GIFs or GIFs, however you want to call it, which can be animated, and also video links, although there is a bit of a debate about how useful they are. We may just talk about that a little bit later. And perhaps most powerfully are voting polls. But I think we'll get into the the weeds of how powerful each of these are uh, a little later in our conversation, Dan. Right. I I actually, uh, a little bit of insider uh, info here. I have my notes up, and that is the very next topic, is how do you use it? But... Yes, I see it as YouTube's built in Twitter, so to speak. In fact, I get way more engagement on any community post I publish than any tweet ever. 
Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. People will hit like. People may leave comments. If it's a poll, I will get at, at the level I'm at thousands of votes on polls. I know VidIQ is capable of pulling over 10,000 votes on, on a poll. Would you say that it was pretty much for, for every single one? Yes, yeah, sometimes we've topped 100,000, which seems incredible. Given like how many people engage with it versus how many people potentially see it, that's the one thing that you don't see in Community Tab. You're never quite sure what the impression rate is on these, but to get tens of thousands of votes, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, and like I said, Dan, for a channel that's slightly more, smaller than vidIQ, but still raking in thousands of votes, you, you, you're communicating with an audience every single day from the Community Tab, which is so powerful when you may be posting one video a week. Yeah, and that is in fact my own schedule. I, I'm I'm lucky if I can post one video a week. So having that to communicate with the audience in the meantime is super helpful, especially if maybe you're changing your upload schedule or maybe you're going to try streaming on another platform or something as part of your creator journey and you want to invite people. Hey, come on over. So much better to make a community tab post rather than a video that's going to get not a lot of interaction at all. And it's it takes time to make that. So you can quickly type something up, throw an image on it. Come join me on Twitch. And yeah, I, it's it has a lot of those types of benefits, the same benefits you would use a social media platform for, except you're always reaching that audience that's already on YouTube rather than Twitter, which is way more broad and covers every every medium out there. It, that's a, an interesting point that you raised there, Dan, in that sometimes creators can be a little wary of taking viewers off platform. You know, like if you have a, a mailing list that you want people to sign up to or you're selling services, you can use a community tab to do that. And I guess you're not actually taking people off of video content, but you're still getting them onto your off YouTube stuff. I, again, there's no evidence as to whether that has an impact on your channel or your content. I imagine it has less of an impact, but you know, you're still giving people an opportunity to uh, go onto Twitch or, or, or visit your website or wherever. And you, you don't have to worry about if it's impacting that particular video in terms of watch time and views. Yeah. I've seen some channels hype uh, upcoming you know, events too. If they're, if they're about to release a, a new video that's, you know, they've worked really hard on, they'll hype yep. people with different photos and things. And yeah, so it can be used as, as that kind of mechanism as well when combined with like premieres as well. Uh, you know, you're, you're talking about a whole marketing push around one video. So it, it is, I guess we have covered all the ways I suppose you can use it. Did we miss anything? Uh, not, not really. I guess we could talk about like, as, as you say, the many different facets of why you might use it. We've already talked about taking people off platform, promoting your future content, which I think is a really good idea, like these little sneak peeks and whatnot, uh, but also your old content. I think what you may want to consider is if you're going back into the archives of your channel and you're thinking, I'm going to update the thumbnail here and I'm going to update the title to maybe give this video a push. Don't forget the community tab as well. I, I, I'm sort of trying to do that on a semi-regular basis now, especially with evergreen content. I just did this actually for a video about how to use the YouTube editor. It's something that's always going to be relevant uh, for the next few years. I think I published the video maybe two weeks ago, but now I've just reminded people in the community tab, that like, hey, do you realize you can do this with the editor? like a little bit of a description of what it allows you to do, but then a link to the video as well. And that always has a, a nice little bump in our, uh, in the views for the, for the, for the content itself. I've noticed the same thing. Actually, I did this with, uh, so what I did is I scheduled a week's worth of community tab posts on my channel. I did a poll and then I self promote an older video and I just did that for a whole week. And I'm noticing that every self promo of a video does really well. And I don't post because you can do one of three things. You can post just a text post. You can add an image to it or not. You can do a poll or you can literally link the community tab to your video. And it's been, like you said earlier, discussed that that's not the best way to do it. But what you could do instead is post a text post, put a link to the video in there and then redo your thumbnail in a square format just as an image. And that's worked really well. I've gotten a bump of a couple hundred views on each one of those in a very short amount of time. So this is really important to understand how these community tab posts are distributed. Typically, you're going to see it on a mobile device and typically you're going to see it on the home feed. So what generally happens on the home feed of a YouTube mobile app is you're swiping through and you're seeing all of these videos recommended and these videos auto play. Now, if you put a video link in your community post, it acts exactly the same as those other videos. It just auto plays. So it just feels like another video in a feed. But if you add an image, 
instead of a uh, the video link, and as you say, some text and then the video link, then it's something different. It block it. It kind of it's a, like a pattern interrupt for scrolling. You're seeing something different, and as you say, it's a square image. So you've got to remember, which is quite frustrating. You've got to somehow make your landscape thumbnail fit a square image so that it doesn't get chopped off in any way. Um, but that's where we found that it's more successful in that. If it's just a video link, it also plays a video and people just swipe past it as another suggested video. But if it's something different in the feed, then it kind of breaks up the, the I guess, the scroll monotony, it's something different. Um, so we always recommend image and video link rather than just, because what I think in the community tab, it allows you to choose a video as a link. Don't do that. Manually add the link and manually add an image. I know that sounds like really pedantic, but it's something that we've learned as we've done a lot of testing with community posts. As with anything, it's also a little more work. And, you know, if, if yeah, something yeah, if is. something can be made easy, people would rather do that. But there is always that benefit to doing that just extra little bit of work. So this is why it's important to save your thumbnail PSDs, <laughs> all of your thumbnail raw files so you can go in. It's very quick to then take it and make it a square. And uh, sometimes I like to change them up. I it's, it's not really an A-B test, but I like to take... Sometimes when I make a thumbnail, I have extra bits of images that don't get used. It's a good opportunity to maybe use those. So yeah. if you have... A, on hand anyway yeah it it can be a very powerful tool and like i said i've been noticing a bump on all the videos i do this with when your videos normally get uh maybe two thousand views or something and a couple extra hundred views come up on an older video that's helpful that's awesome so what would you say the vidIQ ones do um I have seen some get like maybe a couple of thousand uh, views after after posting in the community tab and then the follow on is that they, they seem to start getting recommended more. I uh, like, I think a couple of months ago, I made a video about how to start a, a brand new YouTube channel and I put a lot of time and effort into it. And it's one of those where you've just got to hope that search picks it up and it wasn't doing what it wanted to do. So I just reminded people in the community tab, I think I maybe posted the video two or three times over the course of a month. And now it seems to have had that little bit of a kick in discovery. And it's now establishing itself more as a, a in search, which is what I intentionally wanted it to do. This episode of Tube Talk is brought to you by vidIQ's Trend Alerts tool. Think Google Alerts, but specifically for YouTube trends. This tool is great for planning your next video as it helps you stay on top of trending topics within your niche. Provided you have vidIQ installed on your Chrome or Firefox browser, you'll find it on the left-hand sidebar the next time you're in your YouTube studio. Once there, you can create an alert and enter keywords for it and set the parameters. So, for example, I could have a channel that covers iPhones. And I may want an alert that includes things like iPhone, iPhone 12, or even Apple event. Then I can set up my alert to email me whenever a new video hits, say, 500, 1,000, or even 10,000 views an hour. So if suddenly I get an email and see 20 new videos all talking about iPhone 27 rumors, and they're all each getting about 500 views an hour... I know that something's probably going down and I had better hit record. The Trend Alerts tool is free when you sign up with vidIQ. So visit vidIQ.com, install the extension, and start creating trend alerts today. Another really key thing about the community tab is not only how it's discovered, but who discovers it. Because you don't have to be subscribed to the channel to see these community tab posts. You don't necessarily even know need to know who vidIQ is. And yet these community tab posts appear. We've actually done some tests where we've posted a, a voting poll, which is, how did you see this? Uh, or do you know who vidIQ is? And like up to a third of people are actually voting and saying, I don't know who vidIQ is. So although it might be somewhat irritating to see these posts from somebody you've never heard of, for the creator, it is like free advertising and much more reach. Uh, so that's another really powerful reason for using the community tab in that it's not just your community that you reach. It's a whole new audience on YouTube. Yeah. And this this was brought up in that spiffing Brit breakdown, if you will. We're seeing that people who aren't subscribed to us are able to vote on these polls. What's with that? Is is that even, you know, should that, should that be the way it works? which is, I suppose, a debatable topic. But I've noticed the same thing. I did the same sort of test where I said, you know, hey, if you're seeing this, are you are you a subscriber? Do you know who I am? And I think out of a couple thousand votes, like 70 some odd percent didn't know. 
they've never seen my channel before. Yeah. And I made the, it might be because I made the answer kind of funny, like, I don't know who you are, go away, or something like that. But a lot of votes, and I have to trust that most of those were, were people genuinely saying, yeah, no, I, you just showed up in my feed. And uh, <laughs> that's to me, that's awesome. We posted uh, one a week ago, which asked, in total, how many vidIQ videos have you watched? And 28% of 30,000 votes said never watched a vidIQ video. So that's at least, I'm trying to do some quick maths here, about seven or 8,000 people that voting poll reached who actually engaged with the voting poll and then countless others who saw the post but didn't interact with it. But again, those, those people were reached with that community post and that took three minutes to create rather than a video to, to try and reach people uh, through content. Well, let's let's talk about that for a minute. What is the benefit of that many people seeing your poll saying I've never seen your videos and voting on it? Why why does that help us as creators? Well, I reckon, I mean if we're going to engage with that community tab post by voting, then logic dictates that YouTube, because YouTube doesn't necessarily know what the voting poll was about, but now they know that this viewer engaged with vidIQ. In the future, they may say, hey, let's show them the video in a feed. And so again, that's another discovery opportunity, which is awesome for the creator. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but you're just thinking on the lines of not necessarily algorithm, but how audiences interact with things. If an audience member is voting or posting a comment that is surely a positive sign to youtube that i, I now am aware of it iq and maybe i might want to see something from them in the, in the future and uh, so there's a huge benefit for i think for both like youtube finding the right audience the creator meeting a, a new audience uh, as well what do you think dan i think the idea is and we've touched on this already but the idea is your poll or post or whatever it is is getting shown to people who ideally have an interest in who you even are. So these are folks who have probably watched YouTube growth content in the past. Yeah, that's true. And they're they're going to see vidIQ posting potentially about growing. Uh, for me, I have a Minecraft channel, and I try and make my polls somewhat related to Minecraft in, in some form or fashion. Sometimes I, just make, I make silly ones, and those do well too. But when I do that, Someone is seeing it for the first time. They're seeing me and they vote and there's a chance that they will click on my channel to see, you know, this guy's talking about Minecraft and the assumption can then be made. Do they have a Minecraft channel? Do they make Minecraft content? And boom, you know, now you have someone exploring your channel who otherwise wouldn't. And perhaps the more they vote on those polls, like you said, they could get shown a video from me one day rather than a poll. And that's the hope. It's, it's just another way to market yourself and I guess this leads to the next question I have. How do you analyze it? Because I understand that this has been updated a little bit. How do you analyze these posts? Yeah, so for a long time, the only data you had was uh, from the community tab itself. If you went into that tab on the mobile app or on desktop, and you could just scroll through and find out how many likes, how many comments, and if you did a voting poll, how many votes, and that would be pretty much it. And you couldn't sort any of this data. What you can now do is go into the YouTube uh, studio and on the now renamed content section, this used to be called the video section, but it's now called the content section. Uh, you can go there and there should be three tabs, one for videos, I think one for stories, is it? I can't remember. Stories, is. Uh, live and posts. Oh, there's more now. So yeah, it, it's a post tab you basically want to look at in the for the community tab. And as Dan said, just at the top of this, um, conversation. You do need a thousand subscribers to start posting in the community tab. So it will it'll only appear there once you meet the requirements. And people even then probably need to work a, a few weeks to get access to it because people hit a thousand subscribers and immediately assume that they have access. Anyway, that screen now shows you a timeline of all of your community posts. But the powerful thing to a certain extent is that you can now sort the columns. So I think you can sort by the most votes on a voting poll or the most likes or the most comments. Again, it's not perfect. I would still love to see actual impressions, like how many times somebody sees this content so we can work out the engagement rates. But you can work out if certain images 
are better, whether it's a picture of a dog or a picture of a graph going up or a, or a GIF that does a certain thing or certain, vote, certain voting polls. Sometimes the weirdest and wackiest voting polls get more engagement than ones when you're trying to be serious. Or when you're asking certain questions, because sometimes it can be really good to just canvas your audience and say, hey, what did you think about this latest video? Or do you think I should do uh, this video next or this video next? Or um, let me know what you think of uh, my new backdrop. And you can get all sorts of reactions there from not only these people who haven't yet come into contact with your channel, but your actual subscribers who are seen in the community, who are seen in this community post as well. To repeat again, it's the YouTube studio, it's content, it's the post tab, and from there you can sort the columns and I think you can sort by um, date as well so you can go back to your oldest community tab post as well. It's it's important to note that, and like you said, it's there's not a whole lot there. You can't see how many impressions something gave. Like video analytics go really, really deep and posts just don't. It's very, very shallow right now. I hope as as part of all of this, uh, especially all the new engagement we're seeing on posts, that more of those analytics become native to, to these polls and, and, and posts and things like that. Because, yeah, it'd be great to know which ones are performing better than others. Is it better when I promote a video? Is it better when I do a poll? Is it better when I just ask the audience a question? And so right now you can just, you know, make the determination based on any comments or likes you get for yourself. But if we could see, yeah, like you said, impressions uh, that would be that would be enormous. That would be awesome. So maybe you can reach an even wider audience when you when you speak about things that are more in your niche or more outside your niche. I've just gone back to our very first uh, community post tab, uh, and it says, "Hello, VidIQ community. We're testing out our community tab. Enjoy your video making day." And that was posted on the thirtieth of November, <laughs> twenty seventeen. So three and a half years ago at this point, and I got twenty three comments and eighty six likes. Since then, we've posted quite a lot. <laughs> how many how many subscribers back then do you think? Uh, uh, back in 2017, that would have been just over 100,000 or just under, I think. So from then to now, 100,000 subscribers. I mean, we have more subscribers now, but would you say that it, the average community post just gets a lot more uh, interaction than they ever did before? So I'm trying to find a similar one. Um and I posted one maybe on the 28th of January, so that's a few days ago. So it's had time to um, percolate in the community tab, and that's how to monetize your YouTube channel. I just give like a bullet point of the requirements you need, and that got 551 comments and two and a half thousand likes. I think that's representative of how much we've grown and how much uh, we utilize the community tab. Um, but I will stress that we've been posting in that community tab for the last three and a half years. We we didn't abandon it. We continue to use it. And so it's taken a long time to, I guess, cultivate that strength from uh, these very simple posts. Yeah, I, it just it just kind of goes back to the, the question at hand. Is the community tab broken? And, and that's that's what I've been seeing myself is that I'm not noticing any extreme uh engagement when i make a post as if something changed one day and a switch was flipped and now we can just quote unquote abuse the community tab um i'm sure you feel the same way i i agree i th i don't deny that maybe youtube is favoring the community tab perhaps uh in the last 12 to 18 months to inc more, encourage more people to use it um, by starting to maybe include more community posts in feeds. But like you say, I haven't discovered an exploit per se, but that's not to say that they don't exist. We are seeing some channels that are doing some really wacky things. And I would just say, as good practice for any creator, whether this is live streams, stories, shorts, the community tab is just another tool to reach your audience and you should be using it and experimenting with it because if you're not, then you're potentially missing out on the ability to reach your audience more, to have more calls to action to your content, to ultimately perhaps get people to sign up to a mailing list or visit a, a website and buy your products and services. And the community tab is just a really easy way of doing that. I mean, especially for like when you think about animators who've always struggled with content, it takes them weeks, sometimes months to, cr months to create their content. 
And the community tab allows them to stay in touch with their audience when they're not publishing a new video, whether it be a, a small a GIF of a teaser of some of their animation or just staying in touch saying, I'm like 20% through this video, looking forward to sharing it, so on and so forth. I, for me, there's no reason you shouldn't use it. But at the same time, Dan, I haven't found a way to manipulate it. And I'm glad because I don't want people to find a shortcut necessarily with shorts or stories in a way that's 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 a hack. It's, it's an opportunity. And I always feel as if people should be taking advantage of whatever opportunities there are out there. Yeah, I agree. And and it's funny because the spiffing Brit uh, set out to basically fix what they feel is broken. Uh, and, and yeah, there shouldn't be there shouldn't be any shortcuts. It's not, you know, in the long run, it doesn't really work out. But, you know, you mentioned stories and shorts and things like that. And, and what what stood out to me when you just said that was that on a YouTube story, certain channels can benefit from that, but certain ones have trouble. And I'm speaking from experience. If I use a store, the, the stories feature on my gaming channel, it's really tough. I, I have to basically take a video uh, that I did and, and cut it into a story, get it on my phone so I can then post it to the stories tab. And it's a lot of extra work and they don't tend to do a whole lot for me. The, you know, the engagement on those is low. Uh, so for me, for what I'm doing, I don't feel the stories is the right feature. Some channels probably feel this way about shorts. Maybe yeah, th- what, yeah. for what they do, I don't think I can benefit from YouTube shorts. But the one thing I think everyone can benefit from is, in fact, the community tab. I don't think there's any limit to the types of channels that can benefit from this because of all the different ways you can use it. Yeah, it's not more video content. Like you said, Dan, stories is a very weird part of YouTube right now. To me, it looks like it's going to get superseded by shorts uh, at some point very soon, but it's still there. And yeah, the community tab is just so easy to use. It, it, it's so easy to use. And I, if I was going to challenge every, anybody, it would be make one community post per day for a month to just see what happens. I don't think there's any evidence of a community tab ever damaging a channel. Uh, so what have you got to lose? Right. I completely agree. And, uh, I am uh, I'm very curious to see the results of this I guess experiment that the spiffing Brit did because they they did do a follow-up video they talked to YouTube YouTube mentioned that they would like to investigate they want to see if there is some kind of unfair advantage you know to be had here and they want to look into that which is which is great if that's exactly what's happening but they also mentioned in their video that because everybody went and jumped on board with this experiment it actually fixed the problem because not a lot of people were using it and it's kind of like shorts not a lot of people are making shorts right now which is why there's so much available real estate to get your shorts discovered as more people use that feature shorts will become a little more balanced on the platform you know uh, just like videos are now so i i still maintain that nothing's really broken if people are seeing your community tab posts who are outside of your community that's that's something to be excited about because That's what you want your videos to do. You want your videos to reach people who aren't subscribed to you. So while you can update your subscribers with the community tab, that's not its only function. I don't get upset with Twitter if my tweets appear in someone else's feed for some reason. It's something to embrace. And it's also cool to know YouTube's paying attention. I guess we should try and summarize this um, video for a second then, Dan. So the spiffing Brit posted a video called the YouTube algorithm glitch, Mm -hmm. the secret YouTube exploits. Uh, YouTube is a perfectly balanced website. That's a long title. Um, <laughs> and I think what it was basically saying was that if you post a on the community tab, uh, first of all, you get a lot of uh, exposure. If you comment on your own community tab post, that will increase exposure. If somebody engages with that community post, it increases the exposure. And then if you try and stuff loads of common trending keywords in the community post, it may increase the exposure even more. And I don't necessarily doubt all of that. Um, I guess the problem is that the Spiffing Brit is a channel that has 1.5 million subscribers. So they already have a certain amount of clout in the YouTube universe. And when they post things, then their ripple effect is greater than others. As you say, like when many of us try to copy it, it maybe they didn't see the success and even we tried this on vidIQ just as an experiment and that post performed as normal as other ones 
Having said all of that, there are some very weird channels out there doing some very weird things. There are two examples I can think of. The first one is a channel called Bruhify, who is making really short videos and getting tons of views. And they're also doing these community posts, which are sometimes nonsensical, like he'll do a voting poll and all of the options are egg. Like you, you, It doesn't matter which vote you, you vote on, egg is the answer. And these, again, these weird and wacky, wonderful voting polls, people are engaging in them massively. And it feels like it's a snowball effect. Like once this starts to take off, you can start continue to do these strange things. But that feels as if it's going back to the traditional concept of YouTube is trying to find content for the right audience. And if this audience is engaging with this weird and wonderful stuff, then it will continue to serve it to them and to more people in a like-minded, weird and wonderful, I would just want to do silly things on YouTube, which is perfectly fine if that's what people want to do. There is also another channel, which unfortunately doesn't have a channel name. Uh, They must have put in some special characters in order to do this, but they literally have no channel name. And they have voting polls, which uh, bear no relation to their view counts on videos. I think the videos maybe get tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of views, but their voting polls can get in excess of a million views. Uh, Sorry, not a million views, a, a million votes. So there's tons of engagement going on in these voting polls. But when I try to go through their history, they've been doing this for years. So again, going back to the idea of... It isn't just a quick fix hacks type of thing you can do in a community tab. Even if you are going to try and, I guess, exploit its potential and the opportunity there, it's going to take time to do that. Um, But those are like three of the strange examples we've seen of people thinking that maybe the community tab is broken in some way. I, I've been doing my own silly polls. I have like a saga going on right now. I, I have some Minecraft videos that have done pretty well and they're based on a star Wars kind of add on to the game. And as a result, I've decided, cause I said baby Yoda in, in the video, which I shouldn't have done because I had a yeah. lot of comments telling me that was wrong. So I decided to make a poll because I was confused, right? I didn't know his name. And so I put what I thought were some correct answers and, and uh, yeah, I included baby Yoda on there, which won again, but everyone in the comments told me I was wrong. So then I tried to find some new potential correct names and I tried again and I was, I was wrong again. I've done this three times and they always get thousands of votes and tons and tons and tons and tons of comments that literally just put the name of the character. I don't want to spoil it in case anyone's watching the Mandalorian still. And <laughs> it's, it's so much fun and it doesn't have much to do with Minecraft um, unless you want to try and link it back to the videos, but I'm talking about star Wars and I don't know if that's had an, an effect or not, but it feels like lately my videos across the board have been getting a lot more views per hour. Uh, it used to just be a couple that were kind of carrying the channel, but now a lot more of my videos are seeing more steady views per hour. And I wonder if it was things like those silly polls that I put out there. Yeah, and it may be people just want a bit of a bit of fun when uh, they don't want to get too engaged in deep and philosophical conversations on a feed on a YouTube app. They're going to save that for the video content. Um, but yeah, like it, it doesn't take much for somebody to tap on an answer to something. I think the reason voting polls do so well is because they consume quite a lot of real estate on a feed. Like if you put in five possible answers to a voting poll, that's a lot of real estate on a mobile app and people are going to vote on those types of things. I mean, even if the community tab is in some way broken, it doesn't take much for YouTube to fix it. So by the time we finish this conversation, YouTube may have fixed it. So I'm not, again, saying that people should go out there and try and exploit it in some way but just do the research listen to our conversation watch that video about a spiffing brit which i do i do say is very well researched within his own understanding of the community tab and i think there's a lot of things worth looking at there and it kind of logically makes sense but ultimately by the time you get to try it yeah i mean let's equate to like the game stop stocks (laughs) like 24 hours after the news story comes out, if you buy stocks in that, in those shares, are you guaranteed a profit? Probably not. It's volatile. It's all over the place. It's after the fact. Yeah. It's it's so important to get in on trends early. And uh, you would have never known that was going on unless you were already in the Wall Street Bets subreddit Mm. and, and paying attention for some time. I mean, it's kind of the same way with the community tab. Maybe you've been using it since it came out. 
and you've been posting that content and you you notice you get good interaction on it and this is all news to you people think it's broken and it's working the same for me and if you've been consistent with it yeah it probably is so the moral of this conversation is that the youtube community tab is like game stock <laughs> stocks it was fun but don't get involved now <laughs> <laughs> Not what we're saying, but I, I guess it was a bad example. But no, it it's I think it's a great tool. Everyone should be using it. I do apologize if you have under a thousand subscribers and this is frustrating you that you yeah, can't yeah, start that using is, it. That could be frustrating. But it's it's something to work towards. It's something to work towards. And you know what? I correct me if I'm wrong, but yes, if you have a shorts channel and you can't get monetized after a thousand subscribers because you've actually earned no watch time at all, you still get a community tab, right? Yeah, that is just a general unlock tool. It's not linked to YPP or anything as of now. Yeah, so this is a good time to be doing shorts, and uh, perhaps it boosts your sub count and you unlock that community tab. I have I have my own secret channel I'm experimenting with, and it's very close. It's so close, so I'm pretty excited to start playing with it on a channel that uh, is very new, you know, and hasn't previously used one. So it should be pretty cool. I think that about wraps it up for today's episode. I want to thank you, Rob, for being here. And, yeah, thanks uh, for having me, Dom. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, again, huge thanks to Leron. We wish you luck. And we will see you in the next episode. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Tube Talk, brought to you by vidIQ. Head over to vidIQ.com slash Tube Talk for today's show notes and previous episodes. Enjoy the rest of your video making day.